Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In my hands is an L39 Freewing 80 millimeter electric ducted fan jet. Now we're gonna be talking about the power system that goes into this airplane. Originally, the factory power system that comes with the unit is running on 6S lithium polymer battery pack. We've gone from the stock power system up to 8S and now up to 10S in this system. Now a 10S power pack is supposed to provide around 3,700, 3,800 watts for the exact combination that I purchased. However, what we'll see in this video is it's significantly different than expected, which has negative consequences should something go wrong. So we're gonna take a look at exactly what is going on with this airplane and then we'll talk about what we can do to fix the concern, the issue that we have. Now the way that we'll go about it for this video is I'll show you a couple passes of this airplane so that you can get a good sense of the speed that this plane is achieving. And then what we'll do is we'll dive into some performance information, we'll look at the graphs and figure out exactly what's going on and why it's very problematic. In a later video, I'll post a full flight of the airplane just so you can see exactly how that went. Here is what I am considering the stock power system for this unit. It's not a free wing power system. It is an FMS power system. However, it does provide similar results to the comparable success system. This here has a KV of 1930 in this unit. It was good for about 2200 watts where the 8S system was good for about 2500 watts. And here you can see a comparison of this unit against the current one that's installed for 10S. You can see a big difference in terms of even the motor sizing there and the overall fan. First thing I want to bring your attention to is the actual specification that we expect with this power system. This is what I look for when I'm actually building an electric ducted fan jet. I want to see exactly how much power I expect to pull with the setup that I'm intending to purchase. That's kind of how it works with the fan selection process. In this case, I have a 1500 kV motor that I was looking at and that will provide me with the specifications that we see here. 10S is 37 volts under load and that gives us 105 amps which then yields about 3,900 watts, very close to that four kilowatt mark, giving us a total of 4.3 kilograms of thrust from that fan system. So this is what we expect. Now let's see exactly what we actually had when the plane was in the air and flying on this power system. So this is the system now as you see it, this is the very first time we ran this power system and we collected this data log. I'm gonna highlight what we're interested in, which is primarily what is in around this box. And now we can dial into all these values. So if I go and look at the very first section of this area, we're looking at about 5,600 watts being pulled from this power system. Very, very different than what we saw with that four kilowatt that is predicted. So this is the big concern. Here at 5,600 watts or so, we're looking at about 145 amps of power being drawn. And if I go and select this and dive deeper into the details in this area, we can even select a system uh, specification point here where you see 5,700 watts being drawn. So as you can expect, this is something that is very significant here for this motor and can get us into quite a bit of trouble very quickly. Now taking a look at the rest of the power system, I'll just go and off click and click back in. You can see the temperature of our speed control actually does not get that bad in terms of it's 120 amp speed control. We are blowing through that, but keep in mind that we are only going through that for a very short spurts at a time, and then we're well under that specification. 
Not ideal at any rate, but the speed control does not get hotter than 70.2 degrees Celsius right here at the bottom of our screen. I do want to improve that in another system. I'm seeing around mid 50s in terms of the temperature, which is very different than what we see here. So now let's take a look and load up another uh, graph showing our second run. Here is the graph of our second run and right off the hop you can see the temperature here is 52.4 degrees. So what did I do differently? Run 2 here has a big change when it comes to the parameters within the speed control. I didn't see the specifications that the motor manufacturer and fan company, the fan dealer, uh, actually specify up on the website. They specify to use a very low timing, the lowest timing that you can have and get and achieve on the power system. So what I did there for the electronic speed control is I just dropped it to zero. Castle uses a range from zero all the way up to 10 and you pick a point between that. It does not represent the total amount of degrees of timing. These are sensorless motors and you want the speed control to be altering the timing depending on the load and several other factors. We are just selecting the range of how aggressive the timing is gonna operate and I went down to the zero mark which is the low that we can possibly get. Now what we see here is we still have significant amount of power draw and if I highlight this area we are getting upwards of the 5.5 kilowatt area and this is not much different than our previous run therefore we really haven't improved the issue or concern that we have with this power system. The only thing that I see in terms of difference is this temperature where we are seeing a maximum of 52.4 degrees. Another significant point about this specific run is that we are seeing a ripple voltage of 2.89 volts Relative to the nominal voltage of this pack, this ripple voltage is around the 7% mark. So definitely much higher than I expect to be or that I want to be. I want to be below that 3 to 5% range. So we still have to do something about that. And the last thing that you don't get to see on this graph, we're pulling over 5,000 watts, which looks good on paper, that we have just tremendous amount of power, more so than what we expected to have. However, the big issue here is the motor was approaching 90 to 100 degrees Celsius, and this is definitely not acceptable. And even if you go and pick a power system where you expect the wattage to be within a certain range, let's say in our case here, it's around that 3.8 to 4 kilowatts, it's always good to go and check the data, read the temperature of the motor, check it every so often so that you can really understand where your power system is so you can catch things like this where we could definitely and quite easily have a motor burnout. We're pretty much at the edge of something going very wrong and we have stopped it right here. At this point, the only real conclusion that we can come to is that the performance data or information for that specific combination is either inaccurate or completely just incorrect or we have some other concern with the motor where we don't have enough copper within that motor getting us the efficiency that we expect keeping the amount of current down and low. So a couple different things could be happening. Either way, essentially what has to happen from here is that combination cannot be used otherwise we will not have an airplane for very long. And what I'm going to be doing is swapping out for a different power system that will power this airplane for a 10S power system to hit the expected speeds that we're looking for. Hope you enjoy the video. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.